Here we go. So this is uh, complex zeros in the fundamental theorem of algebra. So the first thing here is the uh, complete factorization theorem. So uh, every polynomial has, uh, well, with complex coefficient, has at, at least one complex zero. All right, so the complete factorization theorem says that if P of X is a polynomial of degree greater than or equal to one, then there exist complex numbers A, C1, C2, all the way to Cn with A not equal to zero, because if this A was zero, then the whole thing would be zero, such that A times X minus C1, X minus C2, etc., all the way to X minus Cn is equal to P of X. So we already sort of saw that this would be be happening, but let me do an example here. So let p of x be uh, x to the fifth plus 9x to the third. Find all the zeros of p real and complex, and then factor p completely. So p, p of x is x to the fifth plus 9x to the third. So I can factor out the x to the third. So it's x to the third times x squared plus 9. And I, I know that three of the zeros will be from x to the third. So x equals zero, x equals zero, x equals zero. Then x squared plus nine is equal to zero. So I'll subtract the nine. Then I'll take the square root. So the square root of x squared is plus or minus the square root of negative nine. So x is equal to plus or minus uh, the square root of 9 is 3, and because it's negative, we have i here. So the, the real zeros are 0, 0, 0, and the, uh, the complex zeros are 3i and negative 3i. The complex ones meaning, the for our purposes, the imaginary ones. All right, so, oops, my, my shoe came untied there. So remember that we have to do the A times the X minus all of the factors. So if I want to factor P of X completely, it's, it's X times X times X times X minus 3I, X minus negative 3I, so it's x times x times x times x minus 3i, x plus 3i. So it's really the same thing that we were doing, but now some of the uh, zeros could be imaginary. All right, so now I'll let p of x be x to the third plus x squared plus x. So... I can factor out an x to get x times x squared plus x plus 1. So if I set these both equal to 0, I have x is equal to 0, or x squared plus x plus 1 equal to 0. And uh, normally, I would stop here because I wouldn't be able to factor the x squared plus x plus 1, but it would be a complete factorization theorem, uh, knowing that some of the zeros can be complex or imaginary now, I can just keep on going with this. So uh, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 1, and I can use the quadratic formula. So negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1, so that's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4, that would be negative 3, all over 2 times 1, 2, and uh, because there's a negative under the square root, this is square root of 3i over 2. So, uh, so I could also write this as negative 1 over 2 plus or minus square root of 3 over 2i. So there's two zeros here. Remember I said these imaginary ones should come in 
in pairs. So I uh, keep that in mind. So negative one half plus square root of three over two i and negative one half minus square root of three over two i. And if I want to completely factor this now, p of x will be x times x minus the first zero, negative one half plus square root of three over two i, and then x minus the second zero, negative one half minus square root of three over two i. And then if you want to distribute the negatives, you, you can, but you don't have to. So I would have x times x plus one half minus square root of three over two i, and x plus one half um, plus square root of three over two i. So there would be the complete factorization of P of X in this case. So the next theorem is the zeros theorem, which I know that I've talked about a lot, but every polynomial of degree greater than or equal to one has exactly N zeros, provided that a zero of multiplicity K is counted K times. Okay, so uh, no, but let me, Show you. Hold on. Uh, okay, so I I will say that I I actually this was the article that I was actually talking about. Um, and I, I saw so show you since since you asked about the yeah so it will it become three dimensional so um, so here would be a a quadratic with the uh, with with two zeros all right so you can see them right here and here then a double zero meaning that that's multiplicity two, or you would have non-real zeros. All right, so if you want to deal with the non-real zeros, then yes, you're, you're sort of in a, a, a three-dimensional graphing system because you see the real x and real y-axis are here. So you have the the parabola that you just saw here and it's clearly not going to have a a uh, a real zero but then if you draw the the imaginary x and the imaginary y right you can see that here are the the two imaginary zeros here so um I would say that this isn't actually the hardest thing to do, but it's actually pretty like tedious to to do this, which is why this is a a computer generated graphic. So, uh, but you can see here that you're right that the you would have to graph these sort of in a uh, in a sort of three dimensional system here. So. There's that example. And by the way, this is something that I would, uh, yeah, so you can think of it as an X, Y, Z plane in a way, yes. So I can actually, I can send you even the software that this these graphs were made in actually, but um, I'm not actually somebody who has used this software. I happen to have it on my computer, but, <laughs> But I don't actually have it um, like something I use every every day. But another one that's in here is one for the cubics also. But this is something that uh, people haven't really been doing visually for very long because I'll, I'll show you the date on this journal here. It just came out earlier this year. So this isn't something like it, that uh, people would like visualize um, all the time, like it, it's something where, uh, because computer graphics have gotten a lot better in recent years, 
then people have realized, hey, there's ways that we can indeed like visualize where these imaginary numbers uh, came from. And actually, I just saw a presentation in, in Kentucky earlier this year before all of this uh, lockdown craziness began that talked about the history of the um, the imaginary number and why we even need need them so it's not exactly what you would think but the the, the guy has a very interesting uh, uh story that he likes to tell about it and so he goes into all the history and the battles between the people who uh, said that they uh, came up with it in different times in the world where people came up with things and it's, it's very interesting so yes you're absolutely right so um but all you got to make sure here is that the the zeros total up to the uh, n. All right. Oh yeah, like <laughs> it, it's really uh, funny. Like what what actually gets updated and things with the new software. Like some hospitals I know of like are still <laughs> working on software that they really should not be working on because it's way too outdated. All right, so this is actually the, the last theorem here, and then I'll do a few examples of it, and then we'll be done. So the conjugate zeros come in conjugate pairs. So the conjugate zeros theorem, I've said this before, but if the polynomial P has real coefficients, and if the complex number Z is a zero of P, then its complex conjugate Z bar is also a zero of P. So Z is, is usually an A plus BI form. So that means A minus BI is also the zero. So that's the, the Z bar that they talk about. So, um, so there you go. So that's all we need to really know. So factor the polynomial. P of X equals X to the fourth plus 10 X squared plus 25 completely and find all its zeros and state the multiplicity of each zero. So uh, P of X is X to the fourth plus 10 X squared plus 25. I can actually factor that pretty quickly as X squared plus five X squared plus five equals zero. And then I see that this is x squared plus 5 squared, right? So, by the way, if I, I want to, to see where the zeros are, then I know whatever I get for solving this uh, x squared plus 5, that's going to be multiplicity 2, because this is the second power, all right? So set this factor equal to 0. And then I have to go turn my lights on again. It was 60 minutes or whatever it is till the lights go off. Maybe that's what I should do all the time. Just have a timer to make sure that I get up and actually move every 60 minutes. Just have all the lights on a timer. And then when they go off, you know, then the it's over. I have to get up and move for another 15 seconds or whatever it might be or stretch my uh, legs and or whatever it might end up being that you know makes it easier to live in these hard times here so let's subtract the the five so x squared is negative five then take the square root so the square root of x squared is plus or minus the square root of negative five so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of five i so that means that because this is multiplicity two that that i have the zeros are, uh, well, square root of 5i, and that would be multiplicity 2. And then negative square root of 5i, multiplicity 2. So if I want to factor this, this is x minus the square root of 5i, and then that's squared, and then x minus the negative square root of 5i, and that's squared. So then we have x minus the square root of 5i, and then uh, squared x plus the square root of 5i squared. So I don't think that this is actually that difficult either. It's just, 
again, a little bit tedious, but we're doing the same thing. It's just uh, now some of the zeros are um, complex. All right, so uh, example four, use the graph of the polynomial function h of x is x to the third plus x squared plus x plus one to determine the possible number and types of zeros and assume that each zero has multiplicity one. So what I actually see here is that this is the third power. So degree three means that this needs to be three total zeros. And I see that there is one, one negative zero here. And this is what I was doing before in the last section. I just didn't start with the graph. I was doing this by looking at the changes in the in the signs. All right, so then that means the number of positive zeros would be zero, number of negative zeros would be one, and the number of imaginary zeros, that would need to be two because there needs to be the total number of zeros of three. But uh, this is the same thing as the last section, but I'm looking directly at the graph now. So, I mean, that's what I said about the, you know, the 21st century. We can look at the graph to figure this out. And way back when all of this was being invented, they were using the changes in the signs to figure this out. So we're doing the uh, same thing in modern day. But it's always nice, in my opinion, to notice that we can verify using like real math that people came up with in the 18th century and before that even uh, to verify that these graphs that the computers are making are correct because I don't always believe the computer sometimes. All right, so uh, find a polynomial of degree six whose coefficients are real numbers and has the zeros two, negative three, two i and one minus two i. So I know that uh, we've had this type of example before, but it, it really was one of those things where it it was again not a a uh, an imaginary number in here. So we have two and negative three, but if if two i is a zero, that means negative two i is also a zero because these complex zeros come in pairs. And then if one minus two i is a zero, that means one plus two i is also a zero because these come in pairs. So uh, this would be like the a minus bi, a plus bi, that both of these need to be there, the positive and the negative. So then that means the polynomial of degree six is when we know that the six zeros are right two, negative three, two i, negative two i, one minus two i, and one plus two i, uh, p of x is x minus two. So that's x minus c, x minus c, x minus c, all the way through. So x minus negative three, x minus two i, and then x minus a negative 2i, and then x minus 1 minus 2i, and x minus 1 plus 2i. So now what you need to do is go ahead and uh, multiply this out. So this is the tedious part, x minus 2 times x plus 3, x minus 2i, then that's x plus 2i, then distribute, so we have x minus 1 plus 2i, distribute, x minus 1 minus 2i, and then th these first two will be quick to do, so uh, x minus 2 times x plus 3 is x squared, that will be uh, plus x minus 6, all right, so, or, or x squared, plus 3x minus 2x plus 6. And then this next part will be x times x, so plus x squared 
then x times 2i, so plus 2xi or 2ix, and I really don't know which way you want to write it, but the fact of the matter is the i really is a, a, a square root, so it should go at, at the end so that the x doesn't accidentally go under the square root if you change the i back to the square root, all right? And then minus 2xi minus 2i times 2i is 4i squared. And then we have x times x, so plus x squared. Then x times negative 1, so minus x. Then minus 2xi. Then minus 1, so minus x uh, plus 1 plus 2i. Then uh, the negative 2i times all of these terms, so plus 2xi, oh boy, <laughs> a minus 2i, then minus 4i squared. All right, so now we'll just zero out the terms that we can here. So 2ix minus 2ix is uh, something that zeros out here. Then we have uh, 2ix and 2ix zeros out. And then we have uh, plus 2i minus 2i. So what we're left with is, uh, what are we left with? We have, well, all right. So by the way, uh, th this is this part Right, and actually, I should I probably shouldn't have said plus because we still need to we still need to multiply these parts. But I I did say plus because that was going to be a positive coefficient. But we still need to multiply all of these. So we have uh, x squared plus x minus six, and then uh, remember that four i squared i squared is negative one. So negative four i squared is negative 4 times negative 1, which is a positive 4. So it's x squared or positive x squared plus 4. Then we have x squared and we have uh, minus x, minus x, so that minus 2x. And then we have the plus 1. And then uh, since the minus 4i squared was 4, that's actually plus 5. And then we multiply all of this out here. And you know what? I, I ran out of room, so I, I hope you don't mind. But I'm just going to write down that the final answer here would be x to the fourth plus x to the third minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 24. And actually, I, I don't think that I... I I skipped too much here because I I got you, I think, through the hardest part of it, which was making sure that you multiplied out the uh, the terms or, or the factors with the uh, the the imaginary numbers in them correctly. All right, so just make sure that you do that. But the rest of this is just tedious because you have to multiply this factor times this factor, and then what you get times this factor over here, and it could take some time to do that. All right, so uh, we have two more short examples here and then I'll, I'll uh, wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, it is, <laughs> it is tedious, but you know what though? Like uh, they said that the two things that we're actually selling on, on the internet since the shutdown has begun is marijuana and puzzles. And so, you know, if you want to save some money on marijuana and puzzles and want something to do to pass the time, you can just multiply this out all day instead. Well, that, that might make want, uh, someone want to smoke marijuana or, or do something uh, different anyway. So now, find a polynomial of degree 5 whose coefficients are real that has the zeros 0, negative 2i, and 2 plus i. So that means that the... The five zeros are going to be zero, negative two i, positive two i, two plus i, and two minus i. So we need to make sure that we get the 
complex conjugate pairs here for both of these two zeros so that we have five of them. And then we set this up the same way as before. So we have P of X is X minus the first zero. So X minus zero, then X minus negative two I, then X minus two I, then X minus two plus I, and X minus two minus I. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and simplify this a little bit, but X times X plus two I, X minus two I, and then distribute x minus 2 minus i, distribute, so x minus 2 plus i, and then I, I'll, at this point, what I think that I'll do is I'll, I'll leave this up to you, but I, I will tell you if you want to check, I'll, I'll show you a couple of steps. So this part right here becomes x squared plus 4, and this part right here you should get x squared minus 4x plus 5. So if you want to go ahead and check later to make sure that you get that, and then if you multiply these three together, you get x to the 5th minus 4x to the 4th plus 9x to the 3rd minus 16x squared plus 20x. So I think that, in my opinion, like if you at least get the set up correctly and you know what the five zeros are and that you know that they come in conjugate pairs and you know that you're supposed to sub subtract all of them then I'm I'm happy with that if you make some sort of error in like the multiplication uh, I wouldn't be as concerned because I, I really feel like that's something where these days a, a computer would be multiplying that out for most people anyway so uh, one last example here, and this is going to be uh, factoring a polynomial given that that you have a complex zero. So find the zeros of this polynomial function given that i is a zero f, and then also factor and determine the multiplicity of each zero. So I'll start with the i here. And the coefficients are 2, negative 5, negative 1, negative 5, negative 3. And I'll bring down the I'll bring down the 2. So if I bring down the 2 here, I get i times 2 is 2i. So I have negative 5 plus 2i. Then i times negative 5 plus 2i is negative 5i plus 2i squared. But since i squared is negative 1, this is really negative 5i minus 2. So then if I add the negative 1 to this, this is negative 5i minus 3. Then I multiply by i. So I have negative 5i squared minus 3i. Then since i squared is negative 1, negative 5 times negative 1 is 5. So 5 minus 3i uh, minus 5. That ends up being negative 5 plus 5 is 0 minus 3i. Then i times negative 3i is negative 3i squared. But since the i squared is negative 1, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3 and negative 3 plus 3 is 0, so that's a remainder of 0, so that means i is a factor of f of x, and so x minus, or so, yeah, x minus i, so actually I want to say that's like a, a 0, not a, a factor, but if I can get this white out to, I actually don't know why this white out is like this. I don't actually know where the other one is. So, uh, so this this should be like a uh, i is a a zero of f of x, and x minus i is a, a factor of f of x. So then the other thing that you know is that since i is a zero of f of x, negative i is also a 
zero of f of x. So then I can do the same thing, but with a negative i here, but then with the, the quotient. All right, so I'm going to use the quotient. So 2 negative 5 plus 2i negative 5i minus 3 negative 3i. And then bring down the 2. So negative i times 2 is negative 2i. I add these together. The 2i is 0 out, so I have negative 5. Negative 5 times negative i is 5i. So the 5i is 0 out, so I have negative 3. And negative i times negative 3 is, is a positive 3i. So the 3i is 0 out, and I get 0. So that means I have a remainder of 0. And negative i is a 0 of f of x, and x minus negative i, or x plus i, is a factor of f of x. So all this means then is that 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 is, is also, so this quotient here is also a factor of f of x, and then this one I can factor just uh, with however you want to, but if you want to draw the graph and guess the zeros and, and use synthetic division, you can, but I can see it's 2x plus 1, x minus 3, so therefore the original f of x is uh, 2x to the 4th minus 5x to the 3rd minus x squared minus 5x minus 3 will be the, the two factors, 2x plus 1, x minus 3, times the x plus i, times the x minus i. So that's it. So this is completely factoring this. And in this case, all the zeros are of uh, just multiplicity 1. So... There we go. So that is the end of uh, this section here.